All right, so we're recording, but here we go anyway. Put put me on your right. Yeah, yeah, you're you're in the driver's seat. Don't worry. It's normal for people to have me over here. Going into Washington, right, and coming off of Miami, people are going to be real high because the score was pretty one-sided, right? Yes. Pass rush was impressive today. Really allowed Buffalo secondary to go hunt, which I think is something we could all get really excited about. But how much of that was a product of just a bad offensive line? What stupid thing do we do this time? Hello, fellow Bills fans. Sean Rogers, Realtor and lead of the Mr. Rogers Homes team. Did you know that real estate is one of the best ways to build wealth? And right now is one of the best times to own an investment property in Arizona? Please reach out to me. I'd be more than happy to answer any of your questions so we can take the next step to your financial freedom here in the Valley of the Sun, utilizing real estate. As always, God bless America and go Buffalo! I think what you could take it two different ways. You could say, you know, this is always going to be the chicken or the egg argument. Yeah. You could say that Miami's offensive line really was that bad. Well, Mm -hmm. okay. If they really were that bad, then the Buffalo bills should have dominated them, which they did. Yeah. You could also say this is a manifestation of the process building that line into what it is right now from what they had when they came in till now. Um, I like the idea that McDermott is, and I mentioned on the live stream, McDermott is stepping out of his comfort zone as far as the type of players he's putting on that defensive line, which in all fairness, we always have to correct ourselves. This is Leslie Frazier's defense. Yeah. This looks like Leslie, Leslie Frazier's defense with the, a little bit of sprinkling of Sean McDermott. Right. So, And it wasn't always that way. You no. Know, it really wasn't. But when you have the same defense returning over and over and over again, you have to find ways to reinvent it. And I think it gets really hard. It's kind of a a thing that a lot of us overlook, but like they could go with when, when you're always having the same players, the league figures you out fast. Like there's just, there's no way around it. They figure out your tells really fast in the NFL. And when you have the same players over and over and over again, it's really easy to get into habits and get into tendencies and, to allow your defensive coordinator who might not have been as in charge, but is now looks like completely in charge of everything. Um, it really makes me wonder whether he's going to take a head coaching job somewhere else. I, I don't know if he's interested. Hmm. Like, why would you leave this? What, how much better does it get than this? You yeah, put in uh, your time, right? You're in yeah. charge now. Well, you, you want to take over both sides of the football. Why how could this go any better? McDermott and Bean aren't going anywhere. You could ride this out. There's even if even if Leslie, even if things went on fire at the end of the year and Leslie Frazier got fired, he would still be a head coach candidate. There's no oh, yeah. There, yeah. It's a, you why wouldn't you ride this out? You could do this for the next two, three years and you'd never have to worry about it. I don't think he's at that point in his career that, like Wade Phillips. Mm-hmm. Wade Phillips was content being a coordinator. Because that's where yeah, his specialties lie. Okay. All right. Okay. He was, he was, he was at that age. He's like, listen, I, I'm happy to have a job at this point. I think I can do some good being on only one side of the ball. I don't have as much responsibility. If I take care of my business, then everything else should take care of itself. I think he was happy. With it. I don't think Frazier's there yet. Frazier can definitely be a head coach somewhere, and mm-hmm. I think, and I think he should be heavily considered to be a head coach somewhere. As far as Dable goes. You could have repeated that same exact thing about is it going to get any better than this? Who are you going to get in the league better than Josh Allen as a quarterback? Yeah. As far as just he's still raw. I mm-hmm. mean, he's not the $260 million quarterback yet. I mean, he signed well, that contract. Yeah, you're right. And, and that's and, your point. I wonder. Yeah. yeah well, I, I mean, you and I talked about that offline. And I just want to be clear yeah. we don't talk that much away from the show. Like, we no. talk a little bit, but. Like we talk about like dad stuff. We don't talk about <laughs> yeah, we like, do. football stuff, you know. So quite a um, bit. But I I think that's a great. I think I think that's a point that we have yet to we have yet to cross that bridge, right? Josh Allen signed that big deal, but he's not that quarterback yet, right? Yeah, that was, he's, and I, I want to give you credit for that because that was that was all your brainchild. Like 
mm-hmm. I think in the first game, and this is all Paul talking, guys. We, you know, when we talked a little bit about this, you know, the first game it seemed like Dable and the offense and the Buffalo Bills organization was already treating him like he was a two hundred sixty million dollar quarterback. Right. That contract doesn't kick in for two years, ladies and gentlemen. No, sure doesn't. So I don't think he's there yet. That may upset a lot of people. I'm sorry if it's if it upsets you as a Bills fan, but Paul mentioned it to me, and I I 100% agree. I don't think he's there yet as that quarterback. He's not right. that guy yet. Right. He's still raw in certain areas. Yeah. Given by the first two games, he's 56% completion percentage. What was he at after two games last year? Like 65, 70. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. it was it was. You're not shocking anyone this year. So what no. do you got in your bag of tricks, basically? Right. And, you know, I think the book is being written that, you know, while Josh can knife some throws in, like that throw to Sanders uh, right right inside the – what was inside the 10? That's um, terrifying. That, so good. That window was so small, you know, and I love Emmanuel Sanders in this offense. I know that yes. he's not getting a ton of burn, right? He's not, he's not soaking up a ton of targets. No. But he's keeping targets away from Dawson Knox. You're going to make Dawson Knox targets mean something when you have Emmanuel Sanders on your team. Right? Yes. Like that's, and it, you shift the field basically when Sanders yeah, is there. Yeah. And, and Sanders does a lot of the little things that are really hard to expect younger players to do because Sanders has been around forever. He's 34. You know, like he's, yeah. this isn't his first rodeo and he's been on a lot of championship football teams or championship contending football teams. He's a great signing. Great signing. And I think he's here to kind of take some of that pressure um, off of Josh because that's a big contract, man. Yes. it's That's a lot of weight to put on your shoulders and to feel the weight of that contract before you're even really getting paid for it. Like, come on, man. That's like when they name you the interim interim manager at your job before they give you the promotion. Like, they're yeah, they're interviewing other candidates, but you're pretty, you're either like, you know you're going to get it. But they're still yeah. paying you like your you know twelve dollars an hour rate, <laughs> you know. <laughs> like that's what's happening is I I I love Josh and and we've been saying it for years. Nobody wants to be the quarterback for the Buffalo Bills, the franchise quarterback, more than Josh Allen. He's worked his ass off and he's gotten there. Right, that contract is there for him. You still got to get there, but they're still learning that has to go to be that guy. He mm-hmm. still has to call his own protections. He's still got he he's still gonna take more control of this offense, and that's gonna take some failing. He's gonna fail. Is yes. this failing? Like, is this what it looks like to make your mistakes early in the season? Is this the whole season, or are these things that can be corrected? I, I don't know, man, because like we've seen such wild differences between these two games. It's really hard for me to say what is the team, what's the coaching, and what's the quarterback. The problem, Mar, is they're all the same players. It's, it's the same players. I don't. So, it, it's the same coaching staff too. Like it, it didn't change at all. No, like that, that's what gets me so much. I think that's probably what you know. So many Bills fans are caught up on. You just expect this to be status quo. Just let's get back on the train. We're just rolling over everybody's ass. That's it. We're kicking everybody's ass. Let's just get right back on that train. And Josh throws for sub 200 against Miami, still puts up 35 points. And you go, well, this, we we won. Woo! Yeah, that's, you know? this, is, this is a manifestation of the EP system because we used to watch how Tom Brady used to run the EP. There were games where he would throw for 300. And there were games they would run for 150, 170. Yeah. It just depends on the game plan. Today, the, the turnovers determine how that game was going to flow. I mean, right. and then you go up 14 points right away. Your philosophy changes a little bit. You know, you're not so much gung-ho to try to throw the ball downfield, push the ball. You want to kind of eat some clock. You want to try to work on some things. You have a 14-point cushion. So um, that's what you could do. And, and your defense was playing at such a level that – you could take some risks out there and make some mistakes. Mm -hmm. Now, I would love to know, and maybe we'll never know the answer to this question, but I would love to know the answer of what percentage of the responsibility has been delegated to Allen in his first four years. Yeah, Obviously, as a rookie, you're going to put 100% on Dable, and you're going to try to coach the kids up through a bunch of things. Maybe his second year it was 90-10, 80-20. Is it... Is it is it a manifestation of 
he's been given more responsibility this year because they need to know before Dayball leaves, which seems like a foregone conclusion at this point because he is very highly touted. Mm -hmm. He had an MVP candidate as his quarterback. Mm -hmm. He could make the excuse and defend it saying, I was never given Josh Allen as a quarterback. Look what happens when I have talent around me. I won a national title with talent around me. I turned Josh Allen into this green quarterback from this green quarterback to this MVP candidate. Mm -hmm. The Buffalo Bills would not have made this deal if they didn't think Allen could do it on his own. Mm -hmm. And is this him doing it on his own? Hashtag sports is now partnering with mybookie.ag. Bet, win, get paid with mybookie.ag using promo code HTS when you sign up. That helps out the channel immensely and gets you a double of your first deposit up to $1,000. This is the best and simplest website you can find for sports betting with live in-game betting or even betting the bills to win the Super Bowl. You want to do that? They've got great tools to tell you how much you'll win when you use promo code HTS all at mybookie.ag. Right. Yeah. We'll never fully know the answer to that question because... One Bill's drive is really locked up tight, but yeah. and that's not something you're gonna get the answer to. Nor no should gonna, we nor should we be privy to it. No, right? no, 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 no. Nor should we be privy to it. Because But it's a question everything. to ask, though. I mean it yourselves, yeah. you know. Well, I look at it this way, right? There's some times where we feel like we're taking steps backwards with some of the things that we see. And maybe we are like as a rookie or as a young quarterback, you do the things that you feel, you don't do the things that you see. Right. Like, let's be honest, as a rookie quarterback, that's just the facts. You're yes. going to do the things that you feel, not the things that you see. And we saw Josh last year take advantage of the things that he sees. Now, if he's going to be taking more control of what's happening, he needs to be able to do both. Right. You need to be able to execute on the things that you feel. You need to be able to execute on the things that you see. And now you're responsible for a lot more people when you're doing it. And that's going to take there, there's a learning curve to that. Mm -hmm. um, but I will say you will win more games than you lose when you go for four for four in the red zone as opposed to one for four in the red zone. And that's Pittsburgh versus Miami. Bills are four for four in the red zone against Miami. They were one for four in the red zone against Pittsburgh. Story of the game. It was. The story was, of the game. Was was Miami even in the red zone? <laughs> that's like, a Excellent question. Um, no, but no, but <laughs> when you talk about point. Allen, like you said, as a rookie, you're doing what you feel, not what you see. When you're Allen and you've had a number of starts in the league and you're starting to, you know, you start to get that under your belt a little bit more, you start to rely on your experiences that you've had in previous situations. Mm -hmm. So with Allen, a lot of things that are getting thrown at him and will get thrown at him this year are probably not the same things that are that have been thrown at him in, in previous years. Mm -hmm. Guys have tried to blitz him. He's a rookie. He's a second year guy. Blitz, blitz. You know, mm -hmm. put so much pressure on him. He's going to take off. Well, little by little, when they used to blitz him and they put pressure on him, he wasn't running as much. He was right. putting the ball on a dime on his receivers. Mm -hmm. So, teams this year, well, only there's only been two. Obviously, Miami and um, Pittsburgh. They may have been like, listen. When we put this look against Allen, here's what he usually does. He has tendencies now. Sure does. So he needs to get those things rectified. He needs to be ahead of the curve. It's chess, not checkers. Mm -hmm. So when he sees a look, he may think he may get a different look in this defense when it happens, and then it turns out to be something completely different. Yeah. And that's where he's adjusting on the run. Right. And that's where that, you know, you talked about it on episode. That's his, he's got first gear, second gear, third gear, and then oh no gear. <laughs> We want to keep him out of the oh no gear. Sure do. Hero ball, you know. Sure do. Call it, you know, but that's the thing that he's going. He's relying on his experiences now in the NFL and what he's seen, and what he's seeing and what is evident are conflicting with each other. Yep. Yeah. And as a result, you get fifty six percent completion percentage and him throwing for less than two hundred in a game where they beat a team by thirty five points. 